So can you and should you install lithium iron phosphate batteries in your sailboat? So there are a lot of considerations here. While Battleborn Battery does make a battery that'll fit in your existing form factor aboard, you there's many considerations and you have to look at every single component in your own electrical system to see how the batteries would work within your vessel. For example, your charging sources. So your old lead acid battery bank likely had a different charge profile than what is required with lithium iron phosphate. You have to be able to program it with the right values for this new battery technology. Also, lead acid batteries required temperature related voltage compensation. At cooler temperatures require a higher charging voltage. You have to ensure you can remove that functionality from your charging sources. Another large issue can be your electric anchor windlasses, electric deck winches, or bow thrusters and stern thrusters. These require huge inrush currents, and that can be challenging sometimes with lithium iron phosphate batteries that have a BMS that's designed to protect the battery. So it's possible in your situation, you might need a separate windlass or bow thruster battery bank to power these large inductive loads. So another consideration is battery monitoring. In the past, with lead acid batteries, you could roughly understand the state of charge of the battery based upon voltage. And that wasn't a perfect solution, but it could work because as the battery state of charge decrease, the voltage would also decrease. But it's a lot different with lithium iron phosphate technology. These hold a very constant voltage right to the last point of state of charge and it drops off very rapidly. So you have to have a installed battery monitor to record the state of charge of your battery bank. Another very important consideration is the alternator charging from your engine. So most sailboats will have a diesel engine. This will have an alternator that's meant to recharge your house bank. So what's very important is to consider is how to integrate that charging source with your house bank safely because an unexpected shutdown of your BMS could severely damage your alternator and your boat's electronics when the batteries protect themselves with the BMS. So you have to incorporate either a DC to DC charger to charge your house bank from your engine start battery or have a very smart regulator driving your engine alternator that will safely charge your batteries. Another consideration is paralleling a house battery and a start battery. Some boats, including the one I'm on right here, has a emergency parallel switch that when engaged will connect the house battery to your engine start battery. So your vessel should have a dedicated engine start battery. And in the past, you could have a parallel function that would bring the two batteries together if your start battery were to die, but it's not recommended with lithium iron phosphate. So you have to remove that parallel connection function with another means, such as a DC to DC charger to charge your start battery from your house battery. Finally, it's important to understand what a BMS shutdown is and how that can affect your vessel. So inside of all of Battleborn's batteries is a BMS, a battery management system, and it's looking and monitoring for proper voltage, current, and temperature. And if it goes outside of a certain bound or range, the battery BMS will take the battery offline to protect the battery, but it's gonna leave the vessel suddenly without power. And that can affect bow thrusters, your instruments, autopilot, your entire electrical system. So it's very important to understand how that can affect your vessel. You have to have a plan or contingency to operate in the situations until the power comes back online. But some great pros after personally living with lead acid batteries for so long is it reduces battery anxiety. I used to constantly monitor the battery state of charge because I was trying to always get the batteries to fully recharge each day. 
So I was, so I was trying to guess how sunny it was going to be that day. When should I run my generator? It was a constant thought, where it st what state of charge my batteries were currently at. So it reduces that battery anxiety because these batteries are happy living in partial state of charge levels. Another pro is that lithium iron phosphate batteries are more efficient. A lead acid battery, you have to put more power into it than you took out of it to fully recharge it. Whereas a lithium iron phosphate battery is almost 99% efficient, which means requires a lot less energy to fully recharge it after you discharge it. So if you have solar, for instance, you're able to put more of that power into recharging the battery as opposed to generating heat in a, lit, in a lead acid battery. And lithium iron phosphate batteries accept a higher charge rate further in the state of charge, which means you can more quickly recharge them when you're running an engine or generator, which means faster recharge with less engine or generator runtime you get to put more usable capacity in the same physical space. So you have more power at your disposal to use on your vessel. And finally, there's lifespan. These Battleborne batteries will last 3,000 to 5,000 cycles. You'll have more use of them with your time on the water. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the team at Battleborne Batteries. And in the meantime, I hope you consider supporting Warrior Sailing.